Let's do our walk around on the Pi. You can see the pins on the Pi. This is pin 2, this is the 5 volt. This is pin 9, it's a ground. I also use pin 6 sometimes. Uh, this is pin 13, so this is our input back from the, from the meter. It's the yellow wire. I use the same color coding as the, as the meter uses the red, black, yellow. And then we follow our wires over here to our voltage divider. This is the wire that goes back to the Pi pin 13. This wire goes over to the plug on the meter. And this is the ground. And you can see our two resistors. I'll put a diagram at the end and label everything nicely. There's our plug. So red goes to red, yellow in the middle, black. That all checks. There's our meter. You can see the impeller inside there. This is my polling version of the YFS201 flow meter and this is the advanced level. I have a simple level which will not detect a stopped, a stopped impeller. So this one will. It's a bit more complex but many people wanted uh, this version so I wrote one. I've also got one that does interrupts. It's an interrupt based version. This uh, is impulse input pulse preferred. In other words, uh, it acts only when there, the impeller is sending pulses. It's not based on time. So in other words, it doesn't give a reading every 10 seconds. It gives readings when the impeller is turning. Uh, so in other words, there's output only when it's flowing, when the water's flowing. Note that the YFS201 gives six pulses per revolution. I wrote a tachometer program to discover that because this wasn't quite working like I thought it should. So I did some experimentation. I'll post that tachometer program also. This uses a nested while and uses the RPI clock for timing. The input on pin 13 uh, comes back from the meter, that's where the pulses are coming from. Pin 6 is ground, I also use pin 9, I'm not sure which I did in the diagram. Uh, 5 volt CC pin uh, to RPI pin 2. This must go through, pin 13 must go through a voltage divider circuit or you will burn up your Pi. Okay? Uh, from actual measurement I found that the Pi can only pull 30 times a second, roughly 15 transitions, north-south, north-south transitions. So that's a limitation. Let's get down to the code. We import the GPIO library. Uh, we also import the time and sys libraries for things we need. Uh, set mode to board. I know some people like the other, but I like board. Uh, the input pin is 13. We're going to set the input pin 13 to in. These are variables we need, the rate counter, the total count, uh, the time zero, this is uh, startup time, uh, this is the time uh, measurement start, this is time end, so this is the very beginning and this is the start of each measurement, uh, this is the end of each measurement, this is the last GPIO state, total number of uh, pulses, actually this is zero through six pulses from the meter and then uh, water meter calibration factor. You're going to have to do this uh, for your conditions, but just kind of playing around with it. Uh, this is very, very, very rough. I'm not sure how close it is at all, but that's uh, calibration. How many meters, how many liters per minute, rather. Uh, I print out this header and then a control C to exit. The control C to exit has, eh, has some drawbacks to it, but let me get to that in a second. So first of all, we trap the initial time. Uh, we set up our forever loop. We set our rate count to zero, our total pulses to zero, and then we trap the start time from the clock. And then we're gonna go through this loop right here six times before we drop out of it. And what that is is we're uh, trapping the six pulses per revolution from the meter. Again, the meter gives us six pulses per revolution. So uh, we get the GPIO current state and we grab that from the input condition of the GPIO pin 13. 
if the GPIO current condition is not equal to zero and the GPIO current condition is not the same as the last condition. In other words, the, the, the uh, rotor is not stopped. So this is what we're checking for, stop conditions. Then we do pulses plus one. And then we grab the current condition and we make that the last condition. This is so you can exit this part down here. This is so you can exit nicely with a control C. Uh, if you don't have this statement activated, it doesn't work. And I don't really like to run this. This is just something that tells me whether the impeller is turning. It gives me a zero and a one every time there's a pulse. Uh, I don't like to run it all the time. So most of this is just happening right up here. And then we come through this loop after we've done through our, gotten our six pulses for one revolution. We come down here, we say, okay, we got one revolution. We've got another total count. And then we trap the end time. Now we're going to print all of this. And in this version of the program, I didn't print it to file. I just printed it to the screen. Uh, in my interrupt, I have an example of how to print it to the file. Same type of thing. We're just going to print the output data and the time and so forth. And let's run it and take a look at it. See what it does. Now you'll notice you, don't, you do not get any output. This is based on the impeller turning, so you only get output when the impeller is turning. So let me blow some air through it. I'm going to use a tube. I'm going to cheat because I don't want to use, put water in the TV room. And there's another cheat. I am using a much shorter time period so we don't have to sit here and wait. Uh, I don't want to wait like one minute or so between readings, so I've got it set to a very short interval. But that's just for the video. You can go back and change that so you get a one minute or whatever you want type interval. But here you can see uh, total liters per minute is 13.85. Now that's a rate, okay? That's based on how fast the impeller is turning. That's not an actual. Uh, it's an estimated. Uh, total liters would be 43 at the speed I was blowing through there. And the total no amount of time that passed was 0.37 and here's the actual wall time. So you can see that it's not running. If, there's, if the impeller has stopped, there's no readings. Let me do it again. You'll notice that the faster the impeller turns, the more readings you get. And when the impeller stops, we're not getting false readings anymore. So with this polling version, and this is again a, an impulse-driven version, uh, you are free from the worries and issues of a stopped impeller. Okay, so that's it. That's the impeller-based, uh, sorry, the uh, polling-based version of this program. Uh, with the advanced feature of not giving false readings when the impeller stopped. Well, I hope you found it useful and interesting in your Raspberry Pi experimentation.